All right, so today's lecture is going to be about reading and analyzing essays. So we've had short story, we've had poetry, we have had drama, and now we are going to be talking about the essay. This will be covering pages 145 to 155 in exploring literature, talking about some of the key terms involving reading and analyzing essays, you'll find that the majority of the terms are terms that we've already used. So we will be using them again, but this time using them for essays. And that's important, right? Being able to take the terms that you're learning this semester and using them throughout and maybe even beyond this particular class. So as I said before, we are going to be reading here and you'll see some terms and definitions that are similar to those that you've already read in the sections on reading and analyzing literature, poetry, and drama. That's because some elements, such as irony and theme, that are present in all forms. However, how we use some of these terms may be slightly altered for essays, and some of these terms are new for you. So. We'll go through them and I'll kind of explain how essays are a little bit different than other forms of literature that we've already discussed. This is taken from page 145 of the textbook. Of all forms of literature, you are probably most familiar with the essay. You have read them in newspapers and magazines most of your life, and you've had lots of practice writing them. If reading and writing essays has been a good experience, you already know why they are important. They let us express who we are and what we think, our personal stories, impressions, feelings, ideas, and opinions. They let us know who other people are and what they think. They spring from a basic human need to communicate. So an essay is always the author telling you his or her story. There's no more poet separate from the speaker or author separate from the narrator. The author is giving you their personal take on an issue. So there are different types of essays. The first type of essay is a narrative essay. Narrative essays tell a story. Most essays of this type spring from an event or experience in the writer's life. Beyond sharing an aspect of the writer's life, however, their intention is to make a point, present an idea, or make an argument. So often these essays will be the writer telling you his or her own story, and these essays often contain a realization or a, what we call a moment of epiphany. A moment of epiphany we sometimes refer to as the aha moment. That was when I realized. This moment of epiphany is when the narrator learns something new or recognizes some universal truth about him or herself, society, or human nature. And that moment of epiphany, that this is what I realized, is usually followed by some sort of lesson. And this lesson is, of course, the theme or the thesis of that essay. But more on that later. The next type of essay is the expository essay. Expository essays share, explain, suggest, or explore information, emotion, and ideas. The key to exposition is the emphasis on showing and sharing insight, not primarily on telling a story or making an argument. These essays sometimes explore a theme or a topic using more examples than narrative. However, there can also be a shorter narrative element or narrative elements within them. So there may be an essay where the writer is making a point, sharing some sort of insight, and he or she may tell a few little short stories, but the story is not the point of the essay. The story is just a device to lead into what is more of an explanation or an example to show you why the author has come to the conclusion he or she has. They aren't necessarily trying to persuade you, they are trying to inform you of something that you may not know. And finally, we have the argumentative essay. The intention of a formal argumentative essay is to prove a point by supporting it with evidence. The most effective argumentative essays do not rely on evidence alone to convince us. While facts and statistics may lie at the foundation of a strong persuasive argument, examples and personal anecdotes often do the real convincing. And this is from page 147 of Exploring Literature. 
Many of you know exactly what an argumentative essay is because I'm sure you had to write a lot of them in English 120. We'll be reading argumentative essays and there is also an argumentative element to some of the essays that we write in this class as well. And so we'll be looking a little bit more at argument in the next lecture and opening that up a little bit more as its own thing. But for the purposes of analyzing an essay, just know that we will be looking at some narrative some expository, and some argumentative. Regarding language style and structure, you can have a formal essay or an informal essay. Formal essays are usually about a serious topic. They have a fairly tight, clear structure and strategy. Their narrative perspective emphasizes objectivity, and the writer's voice is often impersonal and detached. This type of essay is more likely to gather its support from facts, data, or statistics, and to use formal language, not everyday words or phrases. Informal essays deal with both lighthearted and serious topics. They generally rely on detail, emotion, narrative, and personal examples for support. The choice of words and sentence structure is more likely to be conversational and informal, with everyday phrases, dialogue, narration, imagery, and figurative language. People generally use formal essays more when they are trying to make a serious argument in an argumentative essay. You'll find informal essays are more written for humor or because the author wants to tell a story in his or her own narrative voice. And we'll go into voice in just a moment. But the author will generally want to tell his or her own story in a way where you understand that person, so they'll use an informal essay because they want the essay to sound like them. So voice will often lead us to understand the tone of the essay, which can be serious, lighthearted, humorous, or ironic, depending on how the author wants to present it. And voice, of course, was present in story as well as in poetry and drama, because each character had their own voice. And just like in story and poetry and drama, you can find irony in an essay. And finally, the most important thing, as always, is the theme or thesis. The theme of an essay is the insight the writer shares or the point the writer wants to teach, prove, or convince us of. Because they often have a tight structure and direct writing style, it may be easier to identify and to articulate the theme in a formal essay than in a narrative or informal one. While a formal argument essay most likely has a strong stated thesis, a narrative or expository essay's thesis may be more implied or open to interpretation. So while you can probably at some point point to a sentence or a section where you see the thesis in an argumentative essay, the writer of a narrative or expository essay may not ever say this was the lesson I learned, then it becomes more like you would read a piece of fiction. This is what I got out of it. This is the point that I was able to take from it. So remember, even though an author's words in an essay might be clearer and more to the point, you still need to do your job as the reader and bring your insight to it as well. To review, Consider whether an author is writing a narrative, expository, or argumentative essay. Consider whether the author's language suggests that the essay is formal or informal. Think about how each of these elements come together to support each essay's theme and thesis. And if ever in doubt, refer to the chart on page 149 when including these elements in your analysis. That is all for this lecture. Have a great week, everybody.